What is up guys, today I'm gonna to teach you three things that I think will make your blues playing go from beginner to advanced, all by the end of this video. So stick around, I'm gonna show you three little tricks. They're gonna help you out big time. So today I wanted to talk to you about three things that I think will make your blues playing go from beginner to advanced sounding. Um, in a matter of minutes. I mean, these are just some simple little tricks and ideas you can use within your playing to just make you look and feel a lot more professional uh, while you're playing. So, I mean, I'm just gonna do a broad overview of these things. Um, if you want me to do a bit more of an in-depth video about any of these three, um, just hit me up in the comments and I'll be more than happy to do a, a full-length video on said technique. Um, so we'll get into it. First one that I want to talk to you about, number one, is utilising chord shapes um, to get around the neck. So what I mean by that is using common chord shapes that you already know. You learn them um, you know, when you first start learning the guitar, using them to get around the neck. So I'm not talking about you know, going and buying a chord book and learning a thousand different chords and a thousand different ways to play an E chord and things like that. I'm just simply talking about chord shapes. So the first one I want to talk to you about is um, the E chord shape. So if we have an E chord. So now we have an E chord and all I'm doing there is I'm just, I'm just muting that D string, that fourth string with the fat of my second finger because we don't really need it. Um, so I'm assuming that if you've clicked on this, you've played a little bit of blues before, um, whether it be solo or with a band, uh, anything like that. So um, what you can do, so you would have heard this this turnaround before, or turnaround is, is the end of the 12 bars when we start again. So I guarantee everyone would have heard something similar to this. So. <laughs> That's the turnaround, and all that is is using that E chord and sliding it up so that your second finger is on the fifth fret of the fifth string, and then just walking that down a fret at a time until you get back to E. So it sounds cool, I, I like it, I use it all the time. Uh, really common turnaround to use, and yeah, as I said, I use it all the time. So there's one problem with it. It's a turnaround, so it can only it, it gets used at the end of the twelve bars, um, which is the only time you can really use it. But what we can do is we can take that shape and we can utilize it um, during the twelve bars. If if you if this makes sense, so instead of just using that E shape to do that turnaround, we can take that same shape, transfers up to if you slide your second finger up to the seventh fret, and you just can move that around. So I'll give you a bit of an example of how I would use it. So if I'm doing this, I mean, you can use that uh, rather than just saving it for the for the turnaround. You can use that um, just to kind of give you a little bit more, um, just a different sound, I guess, rather than just doing this the whole way through for twelve bars. Just this is giving you another way of doing it. You can even use it as riffs just by playing it backwards. So instead of doing the turnaround goes down. But if I wanted to use it as a riff, I could do. And just walk it up and it's the same shape. It's just using that E, sh that e shape the whole way up. So muck around with that one um, and see what you can come up with. The next shape I want to talk about is the D7 shape. So 
Uh, it's a, the triangle shape, I like to call it. So we've got the third finger, second fret, first finger, first fret on the second string, and second finger, second fret, third string. Now if you see that shape, if you look at that as a shape, and you move that so your second finger's up on the second fret of the fifth string, you'll see that we have a B7 shape, uh, B7 chord, sorry. But it's the same shape. If we move it up to the seventh fret on the A string, it's an E, or an E7, but it's the same shape. We move it down D, so you can move that around. Up to the twelfth is an A. So we've got that shape, right? But the way that I like to use this shape uh, is on the fourth chord um, at the seventh fret. So seventh fret of the D string is where your second finger will be. And if we slide into that while we pluck this open A string, like that, and then immediately slide down to the fifth fret, gives you that nice. So we can use that. So that's the second shape that I wanted to share with you. And if you're playing an electric guitar, uh, what I would probably do is lose the first finger. Don't worry about playing that uh, G string. Uh, and don't worry about playing that open A string because if you're in a band, the bass is gonna cover that one. And you can just simply slide your second finger from the fifth fret up to the seventh. Hit the uh, seventh on the B string and slide back down to the fifth. But as you, if you're playing solo on an acoustic, it's nice to have that extra note in there just to kind of fill it out a bit. Like that. So that's another chord shape you can utilize. And there's other ones as well, like you can, you can use a C shape chord to move around. And it just kind of gives you some options rather than just playing the run of the mill 12 bar blues all the time. It just gives you some options to move around the neck and do what I like to call smoke and mirrors playing. And that's a huge part of my technique is smoke and mirrors because I'm not a fast player. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm, I can play guitar relatively well, but a lot of what I play is just making it look like I know what I'm doing when half the time I'm just kind of guessing. So <laughs> these are just little techniques that I use for, for that. <laughs> So, number two, um, mixing major and minor pentatonic scales. Um, it's a really good technique that you should definitely 100% get your head around. And it took me a long time to get my head around it. Um, I it played exclusively minor pentatonic for many, many, many years. And I still play minor pentatonic fairly often. So the day that I discovered you could mix major and minor, um, yeah, really, really changed my playing. So, um, so for example, oh, I'm gonna just play a little minor pentatonic lick. It's pretty standard. Um, and nothing wrong with it, nothing wrong with just sticking to the minor pentatonic because it does, you know, it. It does go with everything and you can't really play a wrong note with a minor pentatonic scale. Um, you'd be pretty hard pressed to play a wrong note, I think. So it's a, it's a good safe option. Um, but if you do want to start sounding a bit more proficient, I would start throwing in a handful of major notes whilst you're playing. And you can pick your major notes in relation to where you're playing the minor pentatonic, if that makes sense. So I play a lot of open position because I play solo. So I know that my notes that I like to use are the second fret on the A string, fourth fret on the A string, uh, second fret on the D string, 
fourth fret on the D string, so. And then I like to bend that fourth on the D. Like that. Also know that I like the sound of the second fret on the B string. You know, that hideaway sound. And I like to um, do the first fret on the G string as well as like a passing note type thing. It just adds a little bit more, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, it just adds a bit more to your, to your lead line. So I do this one lick, um, uh, fast lick and it's using the open position. Um, and it's it sounds like this. So that was all minor pentatonic, except for one note, which was the second fret on the B string, which is one I mentioned earlier that I like to use. So if I slow that down, it is. So just that one note makes it sound different. So what happens if I then throw in this? So if I do a play like this. See how it gives it a whole different feel? It gives it a whole different feel. And um, so just by mixing in a couple of major notes, it makes a huge difference to your playing. And I mean, that's just a, a small example of what you can do with it. So, um, so if I was playing in A, if I was playing electric with a band and I'm playing in A, um, you know, you hear that? just makes you just creates a bit more interest in your playing so I really recommend you looking into that a bit more and I mean if that is something that you want me to um, go a bit deeper into just let me know down in the comments and I'll be more than happy to do a bit more of an in-depth um, video for that one which now takes us to number three the use of open strings and utilizing open strings as much as possible. The use of open strings when you're playing solo guitar especially is extremely important because it gives your fingers time to move without um, having you know dead space. So the song's still flowing, the music's still flowing, and there's no dead space because you're using the open strings to kind of, you're utilizing the open strings to keep your guitar strumming, I guess, and continuing to create music whilst you move from here up to here. And um, yeah, extremely important technique. So as an example, um, if I was playing, so I do, for people who have seen my videos before where I perform, you know I like to do a lot of hit that E chord and then play my lead lines. And that's a way that I like to play and it's just how I play. But you'll notice then I played a lot in the open, a lot in open position. But if I wanted to, you know, jump straight up, up to here, up to the, what's that, seventh fret? So I could go, if I hit that E, See all those, okay, I don't know if you can hear all those open strings, but we're going, we're using that open G, hammering on seventh to the ninth, because it's giving me time, giving me time to get my hand up there, see? And that's just a hammer on from the, on the fifth fret of the D string. 
that's just to, to make it sound alright. So. So utilising open strings can really help you and, and make your playing sound really interesting as well. So, um, you know, because it's instead of, so I'm playing that G to the seventh to the ninth, so instead of me doing like a, I'm just, it, see, I'm, it sounds different. Other ways of utilizing it is uh, for this um, when you go from the first chord to the fourth chord so you can use those open strings to kind of fill that in so you open string there to go from the open open top string up to the fifth to the seventh so a really cool technique you can use and as I say it's not only like the main reason I use it is to get my hands to where I want them to be but you can also create some really really interesting sounds and note choices by utilizing them. Um, so I'm going to share with you a little lick that I use on the fourth chord, um, which is a simple uh, tremolo picking. So on the A string. So when we go from the uh, first chord to the A, all I'm doing there is fourth and fifth fret. So you hear me do that a lot when I'm playing fast songs. So if I'm doing like a... just utilizing that that open string and so it doesn't always have to be high strings you can use these use these low ones to your advantage so I challenge you to write yourself five licks using open strings on an acoustic guitar and by writing yourself five licks, you will open up a whole new world of playing. Um, you'll have these little fast. Those sort of licks, um, there's, you know, I mean, these are all very rough, um, unpolished, examples unfortunately but you get you get hopefully you get what I'm trying to um, put across so just to recap we've got the use of chord shapes and and using them to get yourself not only around the fretboard but just to kind of jazz up um, and get away from the the same old same old run of the mill not that there's anything wrong with that but it's nice to change things every now and again every now and again so hopefully that one helps uh, number two mixing your minor and major pentatonic scales together uh, again I just write five licks doing that um, and it'll it'll change the way you play and finally Number three, using open strings 
where you can utilizing open strings to not only create sounds but to help you get from one end of the fretboard to the other and it is going to make a huge difference on your playing especially if you're a solo player um, open strings are what's going to help you sound way better um, so that's it for me and as I've said a couple of times already if you want me to go more in depth into any of these if you want me to do a couple of lick lessons with the open strings or a lick lessons with um, minor and major pentatonics um, just hit me up in the comments and I will definitely definitely love to do those videos for you um, so thanks for joining if you like the video hit the like button hit the subscribe button and the little bell um, so you get notifications when I upload stuff and uh, leave a comment for me let me know what you thought of the lesson um, and I might make another one alright till the next video guys see ya